together with refugees has, has, has existed as a charity for quite a long time um, because, of course, you know, the, the refugee crisis sort of exploded on the world in, what, 2016? Um, and as I understand it, together with refugees has been in existence for some years as one of the charities that was started. Um, I actually don't know when they began. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not part of the charity. I'm just working with them on this. So, um, but yeah, I think it's one of the one of the charities that, that was been established to help with the all the issues around um, refugee support in, in the last, what's it been? Well, seven years. What's interesting yeah. is that, you know, we, we have seen people across the UK open their hearts, open their doors to people from Ukraine. But often that isn't the case. Certainly when we've seen people coming from Afghanistan, Syria, we've not had the same response. Why, why do you think that is? I mean, I don't know because I don't particularly feel that. I mean, I've been quite involved in the refugee crisis f f for, for many years. I mean, I think, you know, someone being bombed and having to flee their home, um, it doesn't really matter where they come from. Their situation needs support and, and help. I, I mean, it is absolutely brilliant that the British people have offered so much hospitality and opened up their homes and hearts to Ukrainian refugees. I mean, it may be partly that Ukraine is in Europe, so they can, you know, they, they feel it's closer to home. Um, maybe partly, you know, they think the closer to home it gets, then the, the, the more they feel, God, that could be me. Or, um, you know, what if the war spreads? And, and, and I can't speak for people because it isn't particularly how I feel. I mean, you know, I think many people do are concerned mm. with refugees the world mm. over. So I can't really speak for, for others in that way. But I think when it's the closer it gets to home does make a difference. And I mean, whether or not that should be the case is another issue. You know, I mean, you know, the, the Yemen has been bombed to bits and many, many thousands and thousands of civilians have been killed there. And many people are saying, well, why aren't we, you know, extending the same kind of help there? Well, I suppose the answer is, we should be. Uh, we should not be. Um, you know, there's all sorts of arguments around not supporting the regime that is bombing them. And um, but uh, in the meantime, there's a war in Ukraine, in Europe, and people want to help. And I would not want to say, well, we shouldn't be helping those in Ukraine because we haven't helped those in Yemen. That wouldn't be logical. What I would say is let's try and look at the entire problem the world over it's there are, there are over well over 60 million people in the world now who are, in, who are living as refugees the ukraine has now produced three million more from the ukraine so the, must, the figures around 60 to 65 million people in the world it's 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 part of history you know it's this moment in history that we're living in that people are forced out of their homes and countries because of the impact of war and climate change and, and a whole number of things nobody wants to leave their home People are desperate to get back. I have a Ukrainian family staying with me at the moment, refugees, and all they want to do is go back home. So um, nobody's choosing to be a refugee. And I think, you know, as as nations, as wealthy nations, we do need to sort of look, this is what's going on at the moment in the world. And we have to sort of step up to the plate in a way that is humanitarian and just. Um, and and that's why this bill that is being debated today in government is so harsh, because it is, is by no means humanitarian or compassionate or kind or decent. And it, I don't think it represents the attitude of a lot of the British people who historically have stepped up to the plate. We've, we've looked at you know, some of the amendments which have been suggested here, and they, they lie around the ideas of, of, of people being able to work whilst they're waiting a decision, asylum seekers. There's also this suggestion that you know, we could offshore people, which is certainly something that the Home Secretary is keen on pushing for. What are you hoping that MPs will do tonight to perhaps address some of your concerns? The two amendments that, that I think we're asking people to write to their MPs to support, the first one is really that is to make a commitment to settle 10,000 refugees um, in this country, which sounds quite a big number, but actually it breaks down to only 15 people per parliamentary constituency. We take a very small number of refugees into the country um, in relation to other European countries. So we only take 1% of the world's refugees and we're the fifth richest nation. Um, we take far fewer than many European countries. I mean, Poland at the moment has taken over a million from Ukraine. Um, and obviously it's a temporary situation because most people are desperate to get home. So I think this, the, the amendment that we're asking people to urge their MPs to support is the one that says, let's settle 10,000 over the next year or so and, and, um, and, and provide them with the resources and, and, and their entitlements.